and Bill Baruch. He's the president of Blue Line Futures. He's joining us this afternoon for a look at a few markets, a few stocks, and, well, some futures he's got his eye on. Bill, welcome. It's great to have you with us this afternoon. We started the show off looking at the report from earlier this morning, the jobs numbers, a bit of a disappointment to say the least. Uh, Yellen and Biden tried to calm concerns. Basically, their message today was it's a marathon, not a sprint. Well, that's exactly right. It is a marathon, not a sprint, but really, I... I like to applaud the Fed here, you know, in in keeping taper discussions yeah. suppressed yeah. because they want to see, they want to be patient, they want to see the data. They said that they want to be behind the curve. They are asking for the data first, and guess what? The data is not there right now. I mean, inflation is, is another conversation. By their metrics, inflation is not there, and they expect transitory inflation. But talk about jobs, big report in March that and it, that showed up in April, and that and that. Uh, you know, didn't follow through for the April data. In fact, they revised March's numbers lower by about 200K. And then we only got about two, was 266 here for April. So we're right where we were, right where we thought we were after the March report. And then not on that, leisure and hospitality was some 300,000 and change. And that means the rest of the economy actually lost jobs, manufacturing lost jobs. So it's not a very good report. And, and it shows how you how the difficult it is to to actually hire employees. I, I saw something this week where McDonald's was was handing out um, you know a check for I think fifty bucks if if yeah. just to show up for for an interview. Yeah. So it's it, it's a difficult part of the economy right now. Yeah, we've been hearing uh, from Amazon from many uh, of of the employers in terms of some of the difficulties. Now you mentioned again in terms of the outcomes versus outlooks, as the Fed's been pretty clear that's their position at this point. And you know, for the most part this week, the Fed really dialed back some of those lofty expectations. And we heard from uh, Rosengren, I think it was uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell. They were pretty clear we need to see a string of these really strong data points. Last month's isn't enough, and certainly today's uh, again a little bit below expectations, but. Uh, We'll continue to average these out and look at the jobs reports uh, on a regular basis. Bill, I want to move on because travel stocks are actually taking it in stride for the most part. Airlines, hotels a bit, I saw. Expedia reported quarterly results, and while well, they've managed to shrug off a loss, not as bad as expected, uh, but a loss nonetheless. I saw a loss of $2.02 a share on revenue of $1.25 billion. One could argue the process of, uh, while well, the travel industry getting back to normal is a marathon, not a sprint as well. Well, exactly. And we own Expedia. It's one that's been a really cornerstone of our you know, reopening travel leisure trade. And like I said, in the, in the jobs, travel and leisure jobs, we're hiring. That's, that shows the demand within that space. And, and what I really like about that stock a lot is, is VRBO. And really, that, they don't give the metrics on, that, on, those, on those numbers specifically, but it's going to be a leader within that company. And, and you see the, the, the vacation trend has, has been, that's a good competitor to the Airbnb space. The vacation trend has also been been moving to uh, or, or or vacationing in beach like areas and, and Expedia can can really cover anything rather than rather than dialing specifically at at, at a specific hotel chain or a specific uh, you know airline. I love I love Expedia and it's been a stock that we like for a while. Now it, it dipped off well before, before those earnings and and it and it uh, hit a good good support like 162 I think it was the little double bottom area. So this recovery is nice. There's a little bit of a downtrend um, that, that we still got to break out above, but I, I think this stock is we gained the 50-day moving average, and I think there's some really good upside here. Yeah, uh, they did come off that uh, March 25th low that they saw down around again. Uh, looks like that was around 162.73. The bulls want to see this one back up above the 188 level. A breakout to the upside next week on these numbers would be a good thing, and uh, we'll be keeping an eye out for that. Speaking of a breakout, we saw one in copper. Uh, well, commodities in general have been on the move. They're a focal point for investors, for traders. They tie into this discussion in terms of economies, uh, you know, lives getting back to normal. Uh, but a new all-time high today in copper. Oh, what's that telling you, Bill? Well, Goldman Sachs came out a week ago, and they, they were saying $80 crude and $5, $5 copper. Wow. And we're, we're heading there right now. So this yeah. copper's been on a tear. And there's there's a couple of different narratives moving here. China's trade balance data last night overall showed much better exports than expected, really strong imports. Um, although the iron ore and copper imports themselves were lower month over month, uh, the value of those imports are massively higher because the prices. So there's two ways to kind of look at it there. There's also some interesting trade, you know, trade war, if you will, uh, friction with Australia. And those are, those are pushing prices higher. Iron ore prices are surging. Copper prices are surging. But it, it really just feeds into that, that inflation narrative. And, and you have a weaker dollar today on the heels of, of uh, the job report. You have a weaker dollar already for most of the week. And it's just a big tailwind to copper. It's, it, I think it's something that, that really no one wants to step in front of. 
We've looked at some different option structures to is and play it on a contrarian basis. It's it's just something that uh, that I think five dollars is in the cards here, and it's just it's uh, it's it's looking for it. Yeah, we've seen uh, copper's not the only commodity in terms of the bid. Uh, certainly, gold's been bid today, as you mentioned, with the weaker dollar. We saw corn continue to move higher this week uh, in terms of grains. And I just want to talk about the ripple effect here in terms of some of the miners. Take a look here, FCX. We've got Freeport. Uh, they're up and a big week here. Uh, they're breaking out to the upside to 44.50 this week. So certainly something to keep an eye on. Bill, really appreciate you sharing part of your Friday afternoon with us, a busy Friday afternoon, and uh, a pleasure to have you on the show. Bill Baruch, ladies and gentlemen. The